Welcome to our service this morning and grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you on this Trinity Sunday and every day. I trust and pray that you and your loved ones are safe and well. As we gather to worship, let us remind ourselves why we have come. So together we say, we have come together in the name of Christ, to offer our praise and thanksgiving, to hear and receive God's holy word, to pray for the needs of the world, and to seek the forgiveness of our sins, that by the power of the Holy Spirit, we may give ourselves to the service of God. So let us offer our praise to God in singing our first hymn, Holy, Holy, Holy.
this morning, we're going to use the confession set for evening prayer. As we come into God's presence, at his invitation, and through his mercy and grace, we're reminded of our sinfulness. Jesus said, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is close at hand. So let us turn away from our sin and turn to Christ, confessing our sins in penitence and faith. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been, help us to amend what we are, and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you our God. Amen. May the God of love and power forgive us and free us from our sins and heal us and strengthen us by his Spirit and raise us to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. Now Sheila Matthias will read from Isaiah chapter 40 verses 12 to 17 and then verses 27 to 31. Who has measured the waters in the hollow of his hand, or with the breadth of his hand marked off the heavens? Who has held the dust of the earth in a basket, or weighed the mountains on the scales and the hills in a balance? Who can fathom the spirit of the Lord, or instruct the Lord as his counsellor? Whom did the Lord consult to enlighten him, and who taught him the right way? Who was it that taught him knowledge or showed him the path of understanding? Surely the nations are like a drop in a bucket. They are regarded as dust on the scales. He weighs the islands as though they were fine dust. Lebanon is not sufficient for altar fires, nor its animals enough for burnt offerings. Before him all the nations are as nothing. They are regarded by him as worthless and less than nothing. Why do you complain, Jacob? Why do you say, Israel, my way is hidden from the Lord, my cause is disregarded by my God? Do you not know? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God the creator of the ends of the earth. He will not grow tired or weary, and his understanding no one can fathom. He gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. Even youths grow tired and weary, and young men stumble and fall. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles, they will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now Michael Patterson will speak to us from God's word. Let us pray. Lord, take my mind now and think through me. Take my heart and love through me. Take my lips and speak through me your words to teach and to touch our hearts that we may glorify you in our lives. For Jesus Christ's sake. Amen. Through the first six months of the church's year, from Advent until now, we celebrate the gospel of Jesus the Christ, the Messiah. We remember God's promises in the Old Testament. We remember the birth of Jesus, his crucifixion, his resurrection, his ascension and his sending upon his followers of the Holy Spirit. We remember that last Sunday. And through all of this, we've seen God revealing himself to us as Father 
as Son and as Holy Spirit, the Trinity. And so Trinity Sunday rounds off this six months by celebrating God himself. But first let us look at how great and how big our God is. And then we can see how he's revealed himself. So first, the greatness of our God. In our Bible reading, Judah had been exiled in Babylon and God tells them he's going to restore them. In the previous paragraph we hear, Say to the towns of Judah, Here is your God. The Sovereign Lord comes with power. He tends his flock. He carries the lambs in his arms. We're presented with a picture of infinite power and yet of God's infinite love and compassion. Which brings me to our Bible reading itself. Who has held the oceans in the palm of his hand? And with the breadth of his hand has marked off the heavens? Who has weighed the mountains on the scales? They are, of course, all hypothetical questions, expecting the answer, no one, because these are things which are totally impossible for human beings. Only God could do this, because God created them all. Our passage continues, Who can advise the Spirit of the Lord, or be his teacher? Who can show him the right way to do it? Who gave God understanding? Again, these questions all expect the answer, no one. God needs wisdom from none, because he himself is wisdom. And that's just the first three verses of our reading. The following verses compare our insignificance with God's sheer immensity. The nations of the world if you like, our collective human strength, are like a drop in a bucket, as dust on the scales, which you can blow off. He weighs the islands, that would include the British Isles, as though they were fine dust. Before God, all nations are as nothing, worthless and less than nothing. However rich, however splendid they may be, however militarily powerful they might be, they are as nothing. There is none to compare with our God. He is splendid in majesty. He is holy in divinity. He is unique in dignity. He is supreme in authority. He is the sole creator. He is the living God. He exercises executive rule over even the tiniest particle of an atom. I wonder, did you see the program on television a couple of months ago now uh, about the Hubble telescope? We saw images of galaxies, of stars being born, of a black hole. They were all stunningly beautiful, colourful images. And because light travels at finite speed, we were looking now at things that were happening millions of years ago. You know, the more science discovers about the size and the age and the complexities of the universe, the more Earth seems to be just the merest, tiniest pinprick, and God's might and power simply beyond our understanding. And yet, and yet, every single one of us is loved by God and matters to him. This is all summed up for me in the children's chorus. Our God is so big, so strong and so mighty, there is nothing our God cannot do. And so we come to the revelation of God. In the Old Testament, God revealed himself in many and various ways, through creation, through speaking directly, for instance, to Moses, 
through dreams to Jacob, through wonders, the plagues of Egypt and indeed the Exodus itself, through angels, through the law and his command to be holy, and by sending his, his spirit upon his prophets, causing them both to tell forth and to forth tell. One of the things the prophets foretold was the coming of Messiah, the Anointed One, the Christ. They foretold his divinity, he would be the Son of God. And they foretold his royalty, he would be the Son of David, and one day would sit on David's throne. In God's perfect timing, the Messiah, the Christ, was born in Bethlehem, David's birthplace. Born a human being, born a Jew, not in a palace, but in quite humble circumstances. By his teaching and his miracles, he showed that he was the Son of God and introduced God's kingdom into this world. He taught what the prophets had said, that he must suffer and die and be raised. And only if he went through that, would he be able to send the Holy Spirit. So here was God himself in human flesh revealing God to his people. Here was God showing us his infinite love and compassion, his pardoning of every penitent sinner, but his righteous anger at stubborn hypocrisy and disbelief. But most important of all, Jesus was the major factor in God's plan for the salvation of the world. Though innocent of all sin, he died on the cross for the sins of the whole world and in the process defeated every attempt by the devil to deflect and to thwart him. And he opened the gateway to eternity that had been closed to humans since Adam and Eve for whosoever will follow Jesus Christ through it. That is such an amazing fact that God should love and care so much for human beings whom he created and that he should send his son to suffer death to bring us to himself. After ascending to the Father, Jesus sent the Holy Spirit to his disciples to continue his work. And so that Christ fact has spread all over the world. So let's bring this now to a conclusion. We have considered the unimaginable greatness and the bigness of our God. You know, twice a day Jewish men are supposed to recite Shema Yisrael, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Echad which means, in English, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God. The Lord is one. Our God is indeed one. And yet we've seen that he's revealed himself as Father, as Son, and as Holy Spirit. One God in three persons, yet three separate persons in one God. We call this Trinity. It's derived from the words tri-unity, three in one and one in three. It's probably the best way that theologians have devised to describe what in fact is indescribable, what is beyond our imagination. How great, how big is our God and yet how merciful and loving is our God. Hallelujah. Amen. Our next hymn is Before the Throne of God Above. Whoever lives 
and pleads for me. My name is graven on his hands. My name is written on his heart. I know that while in heaven he stands, no tongue can bid me thence depart. No tongue can bid me thence depart. Satan tempts me to despair and tells me of the guilt within. Upward I look and see him there, who made an end to all my sin. Because the sinless Savior died, my sinful soul is. We now declare the basis of our belief in saying together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Denise Scarlett will now lead our intercessions and conclude our prayers by leading us in the Lord's Prayer. On this Trinity Sunday, we've come before you, Lord, to offer our praise and adoration. You are God the Creator, giving us richly all things to enjoy. You are Christ the Saviour of the world, made flesh to set us free. You are the spirit of truth and love, willing to dwell in us. You are holy and blessed. One God, eternal Trinity, be near to us the people, formed in your image and close to the world your love brings to life. Amen. Lord, we pray for your church throughout the world for those that are thriving 
and those which have lost a sense of direction. We give thanks for our church and its people and gladly acknowledge all the gifts you have given us through its life. We ask you to open wide our hearts that we may welcome the stranger and share our faith with others. Open wide our minds that we may receive new truth and understand your will. Amen. Jesus, we thank you for your faithfulness in how you've guided and equipped people in their jobs and have provided in the past. It can be scary and overwhelming not knowing how bills and obligations will be met or to not to be able to provide for families. As people feel financial strain during the uncertainty, bring them comfort and peace, reminding them that you are there for them. Provide for them in their time of need. We ask this in your name. Amen. Father, we seek your wisdom daily. Be with people making decisions that affect the lives and futures of our families, communities, countries and the wider world. We pray that they communicate clearly, truthfully and calmly with each other and with the public and that their messages are received and heeded. May truth and empathy be the touchstones of people setting policies for our protection. Amen. Lord God, there are times when we are weary. May we look to you, the everlasting God, who renews his people. As we wait on you, so fill us with your Holy Spirit, that we may mount up with wings like eagles to do your will. Amen. Lord, now that businesses and schools are starting to reopen, continue to be with families as they adjust to this new phase in their home life. We ask that you guide people in their new realities. Give spouses grace for each other. Prompt worn out parents to speak words of kindness and encouragement to their children. Help children find creative ways to experience the beauty of all you've created and to continue learning. Amen. And gathering our prayers and praises into one, as our Saviour has taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Our final hymn this morning is I Will Sing the Wondrous Story.
As our concluding prayer before the grace, we're going to use the collet set for Trinity Sunday. Please join me in saying, Holy God, faithful and unchanging, enlarge our minds with the knowledge of your truth and draw us more deeply into the mystery of your love, that we may truly worship you, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Now we close our service by saying the grace together. And as you pray this blessing, I invite you to imagine you are praying it not only for yourself and your family, but for our benefits and out into our communities and across the world. Together we pray that the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen.